Ear, Chao Jiao, Ruth, Professor Yu and colleagues, good day. This is Claude from Shenzhen Institute of Advanced Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. It is a great pity that I cannot attend this workshop in person due to my health condition. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce our project progress to the old and the new friends. The photo shows our underwater imager called Imaging Plankton Probe, IPP. Its development was from the needs by our local coast monitoring. Shenzhen is the central cosmopolitan of the Great Bay Area, which is just neighboring to the north of Hong Kong. Shenzhen has about 20 million residents. The city has a network of 13 buoys, which were equipped with various in-situ sensors such as salinity and temperature. But this is obviously not enough. This stimulates our interest to develop this new buoy-borne plankton sensor. Compared with traditional dark field imaging, as the yellow light indicates, IPP has a unique feature of its 360-degree annular laminar lighting design. As the red lights show, we deliberately designed to compress the white LED light illumination to spatially match the depth of field and field of view of the imaging optics, such that the illumination on spaces outside this region is minimized. This ensures much less background noise in the captured photo. The little fish captured by IPP shows a perfect example indicating such self-light circle effect. Traditional white light illumination will cause two serious problems. As pointed out in our paper, without our new design, an imager usually generates a very poor quality image yield, which is defined as the ratio between clear images to the total acquired raw images. The other problem is that the strong flash is easy to induce sole plankton phototaxis, which leads to error or even impossibility for quantitative plankton observation. In comparison, our illumination engineering has successfully improved the acquired quality image yield and also greatly reduced the phototaxis-induced zooplankton aggregation phenomena. Additionally, we also studied focus evaluation algorithms that can further help IPP filter out the out-of-focus blurry images by applying them on board the instrument in real time. From 2005 to 2011, we carried out several coastal raft trials of IPP before we tried it on a real buoy. Then we obtained millions of high-quality images as shown here. With the tremendous number of images, we adopted a strategy called active learning to curate them. The core idea of this scheme is that we train premature machine classifiers using less image data with little hand labeling work done by amateur students first. Then we used these non-perfect but usable classifiers to help us further sort out bigger image data. While their performance is limited, they are tireless. After their course sorting, we again invite amateurs and experts to work collaboratively to double-check the annotation results, such that we can obtain very good quality in-situ plankton image datasets and usable machine classifiers. Finally, we established the first in-situ plankton and particle image database named DYB PlanktonNet and shared it freely with the academia via IEEE data port. DUIB PlanktonNet contains more than 90 categories plankton and suspended particles distributed in close to 50,000 ROI images. In the meantime, a two-stage machine classifier consisting of a VHGNet 11 and a ResNet 18 has also achieved state-of-the-art plankton image classification performance, which provides us with a semi-automated way to sort out all the image data acquired by IPP under the buoy trial. The DUIB PlanktonNet has proved to provide a precious dataset for development in the computer vision and machine learning community. Take our group as an example. We have collaborated with data scientists to develop anomaly detection and image retrieval models, which make us stand at the forefront of plankton image classification. For details of these works, please wait for my future sharing. IPP has shown excellent anti-falling performance during its buoy trial as we have taken several anti-falling actions including UVC radiation, TO2 coating and underwater wiper for its optical windows and the natural product-based anti-falling paint for its housing. You can see after 140 days deployment, the housing and optical window were all kept very clean. In contrast, the buoy body and the instrument protection frame were severely fouled as they were not protected. Please note that the deployment is at a subtropical sea area from summer to late autumn. It proves our actions were very effective and successful. 
IPP has successfully captured many new plankton images under the buoy. You can see some key species related with ecological issues like Theocystis globosa, jelly, Noctiluca scientilans, Icopura with its house, and so on. We can also see many plankton behaviors such as predation, mating, and etc. With this buoy data, we could obtain months of time series of overall particle and plankton abundance as well as dominate species variations. The fine time resolution offered by IPP can also easily make us see the plankton vertical deal migration. It happened a crisis a secular breakout event was also recorded at the very beginning of IPP buoy deployment. This is the only record in history of this sea area, which threatened the safety of nearby nuclear power plant. The abundance statistics estimated from IPP data was inconsistent with another team using traditional net sampling and manual counting. Like many other known in situ instruments, IPP has also evolved from its very prototype to new versions since its birth about six years ago. Now it becomes smaller, lighter, and more mature. We spin off a company SkewTech dedicated to make it from a usable research tool into a useful instrument product for more users. This is its latest specifications. Note that it has two magnifications supporting two sizing ranges. Its average power consumption is just 15 to 18 watt, which is quite compatible for many platforms besides the buoy. While we want to further improve IPP's performance underwater, it will inevitably encounter the following imaging quality degradation problems. E. When we use low magnification for larger observing more seawater in unit time, we will have insufficient resolution. Q. If we switch to using red or an IR light to eliminate phototaxis issues, we will lose image colors. 3. Even if we have compressed the illumination, we can hardly avoid the space outside the imaging volume being illuminated and hence out-of-focus blur could always exist in the captured images. Our idea is to use data-driven algorithms to restore the image quality from LR to HR, from colorless to colorized, and from defocus to in-focus. The first one is isPlankton SR, which has been successfully trained to enable us to convert LR plankton images to HR. We used computer vision metrics as well as optical calibration standard to evaluate its performance. It proved 1.59 times to 2.82 times resolution improvements for the 2x or 4x race channels. Also, we confirmed its effectiveness on images captured by other dark field plankton cameras. The second one is grayscale image colorization and we call our network is plankton CLR. It can help us to convert grayscale plankton images to its original natural colors. Now the algorithm can generalize to a long list of plankton groups in DYB. The third one is Plankton FE can help to refocus blurred plankton images, which has been well introduced by my student. The experiment results proved this is equivalent to extending the IPP's DF for six times. To our surprise, the algorithm also generalized quite well on suspended particle images, too, although it was trained by plankton images. This will potentially expand the application of IPP for research topics, such as particulate carbon cycling studies. Based on these developments, we launched the AI Plankton project together with Cyro team. Next, I will introduce some new progress in this project. AI Plankton project seeks to unite SIT engineers and Cyro scientists, as well as external collaborative third parties. Actually, we have had good collaboration with all of them in the past. The core idea of this project is to set up a small-scale ELT network, deploying eight IPPs near the coast of southeast China and the east-west coasts of Australia. We work with Xiaoman University team near Dongsheng and have tried IPP05 and 02 last year. Both were deployed near the seabed. In Ping Tan, we collaborated with Professor Hai Feng Gu and deployed two IPP05 for Noctiluca scintillance monitoring. One was under a buoy and one was under a raft. We successfully obtained a lot of in-situ image data during the bloom season last year, but also endured severe sea conditions of strong wind, wave, and biofouling. We output our first paper with its early access version just being put online yesterday in the Journal of Harmful Algae. In Shenzhen, we collaborated with the NGO Die for Love. Last May, 
With their help, we used IPP to do some preliminary work on imaging coral spawning ex vivo. Here are the coral eggs images captured by IPP05 from a bucket. After we quickly experimented, we poured the egg sample seawater back into the bay immediately with the help of professional divers to save the ecosystem. Last Sunday, a novel buoy called Collaborator was successfully deployed in Mira Bay. This buoy could provide about three times more electricity using both solar and wave energy than a conventional buoy of similar size. Moreover, it is much heavier and safer. Yesterday, we have successfully deployed IPP02 under this new buoy. And the most fresh images are shared with you all my best friends and collaborators. To summarize, we a group of plankton lovers have developed a new buoy born underwater plankton imager. We have shown that data-driven AI can not only help us to recognize plankton, but also can help to enhance the imaging power of the instrument, which is equivalent to enhancing our plankton observation capability. We are currently working hard to build a proof-of-concept AOT IPP network to expand the temporal and spatial coverage and resolution of our capability in marine plankton observation. Although small, I believe it represents the future. Last, I also firmly believe that the synergy of utilizing both human and machine intelligence is the only way that we human beings can extend our understanding of and create usable and useful tools for exploring the ocean. Thanks to my AI team, a group of young students loving plankton. Without them, I cannot show you the achievements given in this talk. Actually, the pronunciation of AI in Chinese just means love. I love them and appreciate their contribution to this work. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all my collaborators. They give me strength and persistence. Should you have any queries, please contact me, a tall guy who deeply loves plankton and the ocean. Thank you. You are all welcome to visit me in the beautiful Eagle City, Shenzhen.